Okay, so in this video, I'll be showing you how to get your recordings from this. To this. that subscribe button is red make sure to click it and the bell notification right next to it as that helps me out more than you could ever think of and if this helped make sure to let me know in the comments below i'll try to look at as many comments as i can and stick around to the end because i'll give you one special tip that'll most likely fix your encoding issue okay so let's get started so i'm just gonna go through all of these yeah that's what's happening general yep i've set mine to i think this is default i believe or I, I don't know. Um, so output is pretty much where all the behind the scenes happen. Um, you want to set this to advance. So output mode to advance. And uh, yeah, so type standard. Set this to a path. So where you want your recordings to end up. I use MP4 as my recording format. And the encoder I have is the NVENC encoder. So if you have a NVIDIA GPU that is above, I believe, 1050. I'll, I'll double check and put it up on the screen. Then they come with like a NVENC encoder. The new one and this uh helps encoding a lot easier and for people with amd graphics cards i believe there's a software i'll link that down below for you guys rescale output i've just set that to 1920 by 1080 because that's my monitor so in rate control here's where a lot of the playing around happens um i set my rate control to cbr this is control bit rate you can set it to vbr if your pc is a little bit slower or if it's a little bit old now bit rates are where pretty much everything all the magic happens so i had a laptop that was made before 2010 or it was 2006 i believe and if you have a laptop and you're trying to record minecraft maybe put the bit rate down i suggest 5000 to 10000 if that still doesn't work try 2500 and if that doesn't work then probably upgrade but i like to set mine to 60000 even though when i go to put it into my my editing software i can only set that to 50,000. it just makes it look a lot nicer i don't touch this preset max performance these are all good but max performance gets you the most fps profile i set that to high so it's allowed to use a bit more of my computer's resources look ahead to turn that off psycho visual tuning um if your G uh, cpu is maxing out you probably want to turn this off gpu zero max b frame set that to two and you should be all good audio this is my settings uh i haven't changed this except for sample rate which i've changed from i believe 48 to 41 there's not much of a difference um you can do that if you'd like video now here's where most of the magic happens so i set my base canvas to my monitor and so is my output resolution that's at 1920 by 1080 and my downscale filter is set to a bilinear because that's just the fastest i uh, just leave it as the same and you should be good to go. Fractional FPS, I was gonna record this in 600 for the smooth motion blur, but my encoding was overloading for some reason. And so I just set it to 360. I don't know why, some days it works well, some days it doesn't. Also, if you're struggling with encoding overloading issues, you can also try putting your output scale and your base scale down, maybe 720p instead of 1080. That'll also help a bit. And fractional FPS, if you're running a crappy laptop, Try setting it to 60. If you can't really get it to 60, then it's not gonna be that smooth, but you can still get away with it in Minecraft if you turn on motion blur or you have motion blur shaders. That'll work quite well for you. I did actually do this with my moonwalk tutorial. So it looks somewhat smooth, even though it was recorded in 60 FPS and I only got 40 FPS in game. Um, just note that if you're not getting above the fps that your numerator is in fractional fps values then you then the recording will look really sort of choppy and really horrible and it won't look as good when you're actually scaling it hotkeys i don't have any hotkeys i just haven't set any of them up advanced process priority above normal um just allows your computer to have a bit more sort of headroom when recording Render up, direct 3D 11, color format NV12, color space 709, and color range partial. Um, the rest here, this is just file name formatting. All this stuff, I think this is completely just stock. I haven't changed anything. And yeah, that should be good to go. The big tip that'll most likely help you with your encoding issues if it still doesn't help and you've tried all these settings. The one thing if you're on Windows is to open OBS as an administrator. So what you can do is you can go to OBS, right click, 
uh, right click on the application itself and then click run as administrator. If you go here, you can search OBS and right click and run as administrator. Um, it'll say, it'll pop up and it'll say, do you want to run this as administrator? Just click yes. And pretty much what that does is that allows OBS to utilize a bit more of your computer's resources. But if your CPU is capping and you're using NVENC encoder, then probably your best option is to upgrade um, if you're running an old computer or um, clearing your recycling bin, that helps as well. Also, as you can see here, if you run into encoding overload, uh, say for instance, I move my cursor quite a bit, um, it'll say encoding overload eventually. If you run into this issue, and your FPS is sort of stagnant, what you can do is you can disable preview and that should allow OBS to run quite a bit smoother. Now let's go into the editing software to utilize the, the higher FPS that we were recording at. If you're running at 60 FPS, you can probably just disregard this new project. We're gonna title it, let's say OBS settings video. And we'll just put it in our tests folder. Now this works also on Vegas Pro and I believe DaVinci Resolve can do this as well. So if you were looking for a free editing software to do this as well. I believe DaVinci Resolve can do this. I'm not too sure about HitFilm though. Okay, so now that we've put in our file, we can drag it over. Okay, so I've currently set my FPS as to 40 because Premiere Pro is quite a graphically demanding application. First, you wanna to go to sequence settings just here. So this should really be set at the start before you actually edit the video as it'll make it a little bit easier to edit. Time base, currently it was filmed in 480 FPS, but we're gonna put that down to 60 because this is the highest frame rate that YouTube allows. Okay, frame size 1920, horizontal 1080. This is just my display settings. All this stuff, working color space 709, just like how we had it in settings. Um, audio sample rate, the exact same. Maximum render quality, it's gonna eat up my RAM and it's gonna make my PC just a little bit slow in editing. But you can turn that on at the end when you're exporting. So after we finish and we've got our file here. So after we've done that and we've got our file here, um, what we can do is we can go in and this will be a bit different for different softwares, but if there's an option to frame blend or smart resample, so I know in Vegas Pro, it's called smart resample. In Premiere Pro, it's called frame blend. And in DaVinci, I think it's also called frame blend. So what we do in Premiere Pro is we go to speed and duration and just change it to frame blending. I don't know the settings for the other softwares, but you should be able to find something online um, regarding this. Okay, so what this does is because this video was filmed in 480 FPS, that's eight times higher than 60. And so what that does is that puts eight frames into one frame and sort of changes the opacity a little bit. As you can see on the bow, there's a little bit of splitting. Um, let's see if we can get a big motion. As you can see here, the frames are sort of split. And what that does is that gives the illusion that you're looking at a 480 FPS monitor, even though it's only in 60. So it kind of shows all the frames of 480 FPS, but only in 60. So each frame contains eight frames, if that makes sense. Now what we do is we can go to export. So we'll just go to our export settings. We can export this in H.264, preset, high bit rate, output name. We'll just save this to our tests folder and we'll name it 480 FPS test. We can hit save. After that, export video, export audio, make sure that's on, obviously. Now, with YouTube, if you're trying to get the maximum quality you can, there's two encoders on YouTube that you need to be aware about. There's one called ABC and VP9. And A, I think it's AVOC, ABC, I don't quite remember. That's the lower quality one. And to obtain VP9, you either, I believe, need a big YouTube channel just to automatically obtain that uh, encoder, or what you can do is if you're a smaller channel, you can go into height and set this to 1440. Um, this doesn't actually make it 1440p. It doesn't make the frames twice as large. It just sort of makes it think it's 1440. So if you click 1440, it's not really gonna make much of a difference and it doesn't increase the file size at all. Um, hardware encoding, definitely um, for performance and video, audio, all this, this can stay pretty much the same. And what I like to do is go to CBR and because this was filmed, um, because this is in 
1440p, I like to put it at 24. You can drag it all the way up, but then the file size is absolutely ludicrous for the actual length of the video. So say for instance I record a 15 minute video and I put it at 24, the file will be about 1 to 2 gigabytes tops after editing and all the effects are put on it. Um, currently it's at 130 megs, megabytes and you want to set frame resampling to frame blending as well here. Use maximum render quality, um, yep, controlled bitrate 24 and all this just pretty much stays the same. So pretty much all you change is the, uh, the canvas size to 1440p and the bitrate to CBR, so controlled bitrate and 24 megabits per second. Then we just hit export and there you go. So if this helped at all, make sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next video.